A few weeks ago, I put out a post on my Instagram stories and asked you guys if you wanna see a what's in my camera bag 2023 wedding edition, and you gave me a resounding yes, so this is that video, so let's get into it. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Tommy Reynolds. I'm a portrait and wedding photographer based in South East England. And today we're gonna to be looking at exactly what I take to every single wedding, starting with the bag itself. So this is a Manfrotto Pro Light Reloader A55 roller bag. One of the reasons why I wanted to get a roller bag in particular is because, well, I'm getting to a certain age now where I wanna roll my gear instead of carrying it on my shoulders all the time. I was using a low pro 400 aw for years and years that was my go-to uh, rucksack camera bag um, but the reason why i chose this one obviously it's on wheels it's got great features inside but also it's a perfect size for most airline for the for cabbing allowance and i say most because if you are going to fly with easyjet as i learned in december when i flew to scotland make sure you upgrade to the bigger cabin bag. Any other airline, this is pretty much a standard thing, most international flights anyway. And it just made sense for me if I'm doing a lot more air travel to get something that can easily go in the cabin um, and stays with me the whole time. And that is a tip as well. If you are flying with your camera, make sure it's in the cabin and it's with you at all times. Now, another reason I chose this is if I am in a situation where there is a lot of rough terrain and I can't wheel it, Another reason I chose this is you can use this as a rucksack if you wanted to. On the front, there is a zip, and when I pull all of the gubbings out here, you attach these to the bottom end of the camera and then you can actually use this as a normal rucksack if you do need to and you can't wheel it. So that was another reason I chose it. It's the best all in one. You've got a bag that you can roll, but if you really have to, you can throw it on your back as well. Before going inside, there is one more zip again on the front and this allows me to put a laptop, put an iPad. I keep my 15 inch uh, MacBook Pro in here. This is for when I'm transferring images maybe when they're sitting down to eat at the wedding breakfast. I, also an opportunity for me to transfer images from my second shooter during that time. Or if I make same day slideshows as well, I'm gonna edit it on this MacBook Pro, which sits nicely in the front of the bag as well. And this can be locked with a TSA lock on the side here. This comes on a lot of bags now. So not only can you uh, lock away the main compartment, but you can also attach this zip to that TSA lock on the side as well. So your laptop compartment is also being protected. Okay, let's go inside the bag. Okay, even just a little thing like this, you've got clips here, so it's not gonna fold and completely smack and hit the floor. Again, this is great if you are carrying a laptop and other um, sensitive, fragile items on the inside here. So you've got all sorts of different zips here that you can store all sorts of things. So I keep my spare batteries up at the top. I also have a tile here as well. Uh, if you don't know what a tile is, it's a device that allows me to find my camera if I lose it. If it's nearby, then I can activate it using the app on my phone and it will ring. Um, if it's out of sight, if it's out of range, then I can set it so that it's lost and it will send me a notification when someone else with the Tile app walks past it and then I get a notification. I also have an air tag in there as well, which is helpful if it really does go walkabouts or um, I have to put it in the hold if I'm flying with EasyJet and I didn't pay for the upgrade because I didn't know about it. That's also very helpful to have an air tag as well. <laughs> In the next pocket down, I have my NAR box. This is great for backing up the images. I can insert their compact flash cards or their SD cards in here. So I don't actually need the laptop to back up their images. Um, though I do it anyway, just as a second source of backup. But this is great. There's version two out now. Although I'd probably recommend the SanDisk version because NAR box, NAR box are now out of business. So if you do need support, then it's not gonna be, then you're not gonna get it. So I am waiting for a SanDisk one to arrive to replace this, but this is what I'm using for now. It's not broken, so that's why I'm backing up to the laptop as well. If it's not backed up in three places, it doesn't exist. And this is where I keep all of my spare SD cards. I've got a little leather pouch here as well. If they're facing towards me, that means they are ready to go. If they're facing away from me, then that's a used one, and I know not to touch that one. Okay, so let's start with the cameras. Um, I've got two cameras. Uh, my main camera is the Canon R5 mirrorless camera. The reason why I upgraded to this wasn't necessarily because of the megapixels, it was because of the autofocus system. Now, if I was only a wedding photographer, I probably would have gone with the R6 or the R6 Mark II that's just come out. 
Um, but because I do some commercial work and I also like video as well, I upgraded to the R5 because I wanted those extra features and those megapixels for those commercial jobs. I mentioned this in previous videos. I've even spoken about how you can set up your R5 or R6 to get the best out of the autofocus system when shooting weddings. So if you do wanna see that video, then just click the card up there and that will take you to a video where you can set up your mirrorless camera to the best autofocus settings for weddings. I knew I made the right decision when I upgraded to the R5 from a DSLR was when I was shooting my first wedding with the mirrorless camera and I was shooting at a, a 1.8 aperture and as the bride was coming down the aisle towards me, every single shot was in focus. The autofocus system is so accurate in this that it just blew me away and I knew then, I knew right then, I've made the right decision moving over to mirrorless. Now I said cameras, my second camera is still the older 5D Mark III that I was using before. I've had this for 10 years now, this camera. And whilst I don't use it a ton at the wedding because the R5 does the majority of the legwork, it is certainly nice to have a backup camera as well. So I do use two cameras at the same time, but I'm more or less using the R5 most of the time. But it's nice just to have this on my hip, ready to go in case I need it. The strap that I use is from Holdfast. It's called the Moneymaker. I believe it's the Buffalo color. Now you can get cheaper ones. Etsy's a really good place if you are thinking of getting a, uh, a double holster for two cameras. So I definitely recommend checking out Etsy if you want a cheaper alternative. But yeah, that's the one I use, the Moneymaker Buffalo color from Holdfast. Okay, let's move on to lenses and let's start with easily the best lens in my arson for weddings. This is the 28 to 70 f2. If I could shoot an entire wedding with one lens, this would be it. In fact, I have shot 90% of a wedding day solely with this lens. And this is why coupled up with the R5, I'm rarely picking up the 5D Mark III. In fact, when I bought this lens, I sold my 35mm Sigma and my 50mm Sigma because when I was shooting with those lenses on my DSLR, I wasn't really stopping down any more than f2. f2 was kind of my sweet spot. As this is a lens that does f2 throughout that entire focal range, it just made sense to sell those other lenses. So it's like having three lenses in one. Now, yes, it is heavy. Yes, it is expensive but having the freedom to have only one lens that can do pretty much everything you need to on a wedding day is so convenient. It makes me feel more confident. With this lens, talking about the R5 and when I knew it was, I made the right decision here, I knew I made the right decision with this lens when I rented this lens and I was doing a wedding where I was at, um, I was at a manor house and they said, we want the group shots down the stairs by the fountain. So when I do group shots, I like to use maybe a 7200, something with a little bit more compression. And I knew I'd have the space to do that. But as soon as we got to the top of the stairs, the bride and groom said, actually, can we do it right here at the top of the stairs? We have a lot of elderly people who are not gonna be able to go down the stairs here to the fountain. Now, if I had my 70 to 200 on at the time, I would have been like, oh, okay, I need to run and swap the lens then for something a bit wider as there wasn't much of a gap between the manor house and the top of the stairs. But because I had this lens, there was no problem. I just zoomed out and took the shots and they were arguably better because it was a better backdrop, but they, they originally wanted it by the fountain. But because I had the freedom with this lens to zoom out, it was perfect, it was happy days. It just gives me so much more confidence where if I see something in the corner of my eye, I can zoom into 70 mil, get that nice compression, something happening right next to me, I can zoom out to 28 mil. It's even great for the bouquet throw where I need to move very quickly to get as many angles in that moment as quick as I can. And here you can see in this short behind the scenes video, how quickly I can move and how many frames I can shoot with the variety of using this zoom lens. So if you do have one of the Canon mirrorless cameras but you're not sure which RF lens to buy first, yes, it's expensive, but this is a great lens to have for your first RF lens because it covers so much versus say an 85mm 1.2, which is not that much cheaper than this, but you're getting so many more focal lengths with this lens. So I'd recommend this for your first RF lens. Though I do want that 85 1.2 eventually. The next lens I have is the 100mm macro. This isn't the L version. Um, I'm, I find that this uh, non-L version does just as good a job. 
And to be perfectly honest, I only really use this for the ring shot, maybe a couple of other detail shots. So maximum three or four different shots and that's it. And then it goes right back in the bag. So the next lens I have is the 16 to 35 f 2.8 EF lens. And this is a lens that arguably lives on the 5D Mark III for most of the day. This is a great lens if I wanna do the big, big group shot with everyone in. It's also great when I'm doing the establishing shots maybe of the venue if I want something even wider than the 28 mil. This is great for that. Or if I'm doing bridal prep and that room is just a little bit too tight and I wanna get one or two shots where I can establish everyone in the room, that's when I'll use the 16 to 35. The last lens is the Canon 70-200 f 2.8. This is the Mark II, not the Mark III version. Um, I've had this for about 10 years now. This is such a workhorse, this is great. This is good for the ceremony. You might find that you're in a situation where you're restricted with certain churches. Some people might be uh, particular about where you stand as the photographer. So that might mean you're standing quite far away. So having something like this is really good for those types of shots as well. When you're also doing the couple portrait shots, this is also nice again, just to have that extra compression. And also for the group shots as well, as I mentioned before, if you want really lovely compression, then I will uh, opt for the 70 to 200 just to get um, that beautiful bokeh in the background. All right, let's have a look at flashes. So this is the Pixapro Lion 580 ETTL. This is the Mark I version. The Mark II version is now out, but the Mark I is fine because I mainly use this on camera, not off camera. If you were gonna use this off camera, then definitely get the Mark II version. But the majority of the time, I'm using this on camera for dance floor stuff or during the bridal prep, if it's particularly dark, then I will use it there as well. I will also use this during the group shots as well, which is why this MagMod attachment is attached already to the flash. If you don't know what MagMod is, it stands for Magnetic Modification. They make all sorts of great accessories that you can attach not only to your flash gun, but also the AD200s or the Pika 200s. So the two MagMod modifiers that I use at weddings is the Mag Bounce and the Mag Sphere. Now the Mag Bounce kind of looks like um, a lacrosse stick, mini lacrosse stick. I use this for group shots. Now I know the group shots are not everyone's favorite part of the day, but if you can really make these look great, these are the shots that are more likely gonna be bought as prints. So I use PicTime, which is a gallery service for my couples for them to not only view their photos, but they can also shop and buy the odd prints as well. Not only that, their guests can also shop on their gallery and buy the odd prints. And 90% of the time, the orders I'm getting through coming in for prints, for wall art, are group shots. So what happens is the light will bounce up, hit the mag bounce and bounce outwards and give a nice wide fill light to the image. This is great if it's a, maybe a cloudy day and they've got dark shadows underneath their eyes. This just fills in those shadows, just brightening up, making it look a bit more airy so that it's much easier for you to play with in Lightroom later on if you need to wiggle the shadow slider. This gives you that freedom to uh, really make those images pop much more nicely with this. So I use this all the time for my group shots. It's a great addition to really make those group shots look extra special. The next one is the Mag Bounce. This really only comes out in the evening when I'm doing stuff on the dance floor. That will be coupled with the 5D Mark III with the 16-35. That would be my go-to for my reception stuff. The 16-35, having that really super wide angle really allows me to really get involved and get into the dance floor. And you get that barrel distortion in the corners, but it kind of emphasizes people's dance moves and I use this to light them as well. I have it at a roughly 45 degree angle-ish, 45 degree angle, and then that gives it the fall off of light. So it's not straight on at them, it just gives the fall off of light, which makes it even softer, but there's still a nice decent amount of punch in there. Also helpful if you have a very high ceiling as well and you can't bounce off without a modifier. Having that on tilted slightly forward is a real game changer. Really great addition to your wedding kit. So a cool little tool that I have as well for the flash gun is a little spider holster which attaches to my belt. When I'm not using my flash, I can attach this to the spider holster. So I've, uh, it comes with a little sticky back you attach to whatever. So I've got it on my flash gun and then this sits in uh, on my belt and then that clips in and then that is now, that's now locked. If I wanna take it off, I have to press the button up here and then that will release it. So you can see a little behind the scenes video here of when that flash gun is attached to my belt via the spider holster. It 
excuse the shorts, it was the hottest day of the year last year. I normally, ordinarily never wear shorts at a wedding. <laughs> but it's a really great tool. I can have two cameras, two lenses, and my flash gun all on my person without having to worry about running back and forth to my bag. So again, when I'm not using the flash, when I need to put it down, just put it down in my belt and it's done. I'll leave a link in the description box below for this little attachment. So the last thing I will bring is their questionnaire and also their wedding timeline of the day. I sometimes even have their wedding timeline print screened as a wallpaper on my phone, so I can just see at a glance what the next thing is. But it's also nice to have it in paper form as well. Included in the questionnaire is also the group shots that they want, specific group shots including names as well. So again, I could refer to my app, but I also like to have it in paper form because I can tick as I go. I could hand it to my second shooter, or I could even hand a second copy of this to the best man, for example, to help me round up some of the people. So it's a really great way to stay efficient, stay on task so that you don't forget and miss a beat. Finally, if you are watching this before April the 1st, 2023, then I've got an exciting workshop announcement. I'm going to be hosting a lighting and portrait workshop in Carmarthenshire in Wales, which is in an association with Carmarthen Cameras and Canon UK as part of Canon Portrait Week. So if you are interested and you want to learn a bit more about using lighting and working with models, and as this is an association with Canon UK, you can be rest assured that there is going to be some nice goodies there for you to try out and play with, including some very nice RF lenses as well. But spaces are limited. We only have 12 attendees that will be coming. So if you are interested, then act now because this will sell out. So click the link in the description box below if you are interested. Well, that's about it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you liked it, then please make sure you hit the like or share button. Or subscribe if you are watching this on YouTube. And as always, I will see you again next time. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.